I need to come clean and admit a mistake when I make one. Uh, I just posted a video about methanol, uh, the truth about the history, uh, beware and share. And I mistakenly stated that the end of World War I was 1917. Uh, for most, it was 1918. Uh, for most of you, this probably doesn't matter. But as a 35-year military veteran, uh, I am embarrassed and I should have known better. Um, it was a slip of the tongue. It was a, it was a fault of the head, not the heart. But it was the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 was when the armistice was signed. So there, I do apologize. Now let's move on. Well, welcome back everybody. George here again, and we're always happy to be with you and so glad you are with us. So for those of you who want to take the hobby to that next level, and you want to get better and better at it, please join our community, subscribe, share us with your friends, comment below. You can call me, or you can send me an email. All those ways that we can communicate with each other through, across the community. Today's video, we've got a good one for you. This is the popcorn that I got from uh, Bearded and Board, and there is his, or I'll put it there, I think, yeah. There's his symbol, his emblem, and he's got a YouTube channel. Guys, check him out, Bearded and Board. Uh, he's got a great video on how to malt popcorn, step by step, so I won't cover that. Uh, and there's also a bunch of other ones on there, too. One of my favorites is the Apple Pie Moonshine, or Apple Jack. It does an excellent job of explaining that. We're going to crush this today. Uh, we're going to do some testing and we're going to find out, we're going to get ourselves some data points and then eventually, then we're going to ferment and then eventually we're going to distill this and find out exactly what it produces. So first of all, I'm going to show you something a little bit close up. So bear with me. Now that's the popcorn that's been malted and you can see on here, you see they got these small shoots on the end of them. Now those are the sprouts that sprouted out from the malting process. And that's where he has taken the, the popcorn itself and allowed it to start to germinate. And then just like a maltster, at a certain point, he stops the germination process, dries, and then knocks these off. And they were a lot longer. And uh, he only got them to break off only so far. So I'm not worried about that because I'm going to crush them. Now, what, what might this, if I don't get all of those shoots off of there, what effect might it have? Well, I don't know. You know, you might have a little bit more of a woodsy um, alfalfa taste to it, flavor, or maybe even an aroma. Uh, uh, but I'm not that concerned about it because I'm going to distill it. So here's what we need to do. Now, we have a couple of options. One way of cracking this stuff is with a BAH. And this is not a BAH, big ass hammer. Um, this is a small one. But if you had a large hammer and a place you could put it in, and maybe uh, a pillowcase, you could beat on it, uh, that would crush them up. That's one way of doing it. Uh, another way of doing it is just to use a regular household blender. Uh, but just don't, you, you don't want to crush it up so fine that it's like it, you don't want a flour out of it, you don't want a powder. You want it cracked up because you want to be able to get to the inside of every one of those kernels. So what we're going to use today is we're going to use my old, and I've had this for several, several years, uh, my barley crusher. Um, it's, and you see it's almost wore off, it's, but it says barley crusher. And um, it's made by Malt Mill. And I think, I can't remember, I think I got it for like 120 bucks. But it comes with the hopper that goes right on top. And I've taken the hopper off because what I've done is, it also comes with a board. I, I fashioned a new board. You see I got some blocks on the bottom. I just cut a hole in the bottom and I mounted this. And I put those blocks on there so that it doesn't slide around or go anywhere. Because when this thing gets going, it gets going pretty good. Now, the adjustment on here, you can adjust the width in between these two wheels. And let me get close and I'll show you how this actually works. You see, what we're going to do is we're going to wind up, we'll turn this one. Wow, it's, it's just tough to turn by hand because it is stiff. So you see, this wheel, this, 
rolls. This is the only wheel that mechanically is connected to a power source to roll. So as this one turns, it drops the kernel in here, and the other one rolls as well, freely. So they crack up in the middle. And the distance in between here can be adjusted by these two levers. This one on this side, and this one on this side. You just loosen these two screws and turn these, and it'll widen or shorten the space in here, depending on what you're using. Now, why does that come in handy, the adjustment? Well, the adjustment comes in handy because if you're doing, as an example of popcorn, it's a really large grain. Uh, so I'll, I'll need a little bit more space to get through there uh, so it just doesn't back up. Uh, and if I'm using, as an example, if we we're going to do some wheat or some rye through this, I'd have to close that gap a little bit because otherwise it would just run right through. So you have to play with it back and forth. They say start with about the thickness of maybe two credit cards and then drop down to one credit card. Uh, that's about the thickness. Anywhere between those two points uh, is usually good for two row barley, six row barley, just about anything else that we're going to we're going to crush until you start to get to the uh, rise and wheats. Uh, you might want to get a little bit closer because those are really, really narrow grain. Okay. Well, what I'll do next now is I'm going to attach uh, my hopper back to my barley crusher. I'm not going to make you watch me do that. I'm just going to attach it right here with the two screws that are provided. And then uh, we're going to get to doing some crushing. Got it all put together, gave it a try, and here's what we learned. Failures are a point, or a data point, for future activity. <laughs> uh, popcorn kernels are just too large. At the widest opening on here, which is about three and a half credit cards thick, uh, I still can't get those kernels to go through there and get caught on the wheels. So we have to resort to... There's my first blooper. I got a whole lot of corn to pick up. Be right back. Well, we got that cleaned up. It's a good thing I didn't say what was on my mind because you can probably imagine. All right, now everything's back in my bag. Now remember, I started with five pounds, and that's 2.2 uh, kilograms. A little bit over, I got it, it's 2.26 kilograms. So uh, that's what we started with, and I think I've lost about 25 kernels. Uh, they're still floating all around here. And the good thing is, is that we're going to mash it and distill it so... Uh, Anything else I picked up off the floor with those kernels, uh, it's going to go through the process and we're just going to have to sterilize it. Now, what I had to use was my wife's food blender and uh, what this did was it does make it sort of a, a quasi powder, which I'm just going to have to deal with through the clarification process. I guess uh, my turbo clear is going to come in handy, but I've gotten most of those, almost all of those open. And uh, so what we'll do here is I'll just continue to go through the rest of this. And uh, we've got to get over next door. Oh, yeah. Once I get these broke up, uh, we'll get next door. And then we'll start the rest of the process because I've got water heating up already. And we'll explain more about Oh, yeah. We'll explain more about that. Well, here we are. All cleaned up. Thank, thank the Lord for air compressors. All right, we're all cleaned up and we're ready to go. Now I've got five pounds, 2.26 kilograms of crushed up malted popcorn, thanks to uh, Beard and Board. And we're gonna do a test now. So I'm gonna do this both di two different ways. Um, we're gonna get the same results. Well, we're, to get the results, it's the same process, but I'm just gonna do it two different methods. I'll explain more about that when we get there. Okay, I've got the 2.26 kilograms or five pounds of crushed malted popcorn. Additionally, I have 2.2 kilograms or five pounds of malted corn that's already been crushed. And someone sent this to me, so I do appreciate that. Thank you a bunch. Uh, and so this gives us an opportunity to compare. We're going to do the same thing to both of them. We're going to mash them. Uh, and remember, mashing is a verb because it's a process. Uh, mashing is also a noun because you can say, that's my mash in that bucket. So for those of you who um, like to correct my English, mash, mash is used a bunch of different ways. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Okay, um, last but not least,
what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use a cooler, the, uh, you know, the big round igloo coolers, because that's what most of us have available. And I'm also going to use, I have one, you know, one of them electric mash, not a, yeah, it's like a mash tun. It, it electrically controlled heat set. It does exactly the same thing, just two different containers. That's what I was alluding to earlier. And um, I'm really getting fired up for this special that I've got coming, which is going to be an intro to a new product. Hint, hint. So please stay tuned when that comes up because this is a whopper. All right. Um, let me get myself set up because we're done in here. Now we need to move about 15 feet over into the man cave where I like to do the brewing and stuff because it's just so much more comfortable in there. I got the TV going. I got the air conditioner going. and Everything's just fine. Okay. So we'll be set up there shortly and we will be back. Okay. We are back. Now, we are located now out in the man cave. This should be familiar territory for a lot of people. I do a lot of things out here. This is sort of like my lab. Um... Maybe one day you get a chance to visit. Who knows? Look, uh, now the follow-on. I'm sitting on the igloo cooler that I'm going to use for the mash. Uh, and I've also got, you'll recognize this. I've used this before. This is sort of like a great big coffee pot. Uh, it'll hold 16 liters. Uh, I've got 15 liters in it right now. And I'll explain all of that. Here's what I learned, though, uh, in the meantime. Uh, and it's a good thing I really checked. Uh, I have crushed corn instead of malted corn. So we've got the malted popcorn we're going to test and we've got crushed corn. And so what I have to do, and I've got some six roll barley, so it was crushed through the barley crusher. And what did I do that for? I know you know the answer to that. I needed that alpha amylase that's resident in that barley in order to convert that starch in the sugar to fermentable sugars. Now, in the popcorn, the popcorn has already been sprouted, so it's been malted. And the germination process stopped, dried, shoots knocked off, and then blended, crushed. So that alpha amylase is already available in that kernel. Whereas in the original corn that was not malted, we have to find something to convert that. That's why we use the six row barley. And I get that question all the time. And please, it's that simple. You use amylase that you can get in a small jar and use it a teaspoon at a time for normally five, ten pounds of grain. Uh, a teaspoon will do it. Or you use a pound and a half, pound, pound and a half, two pounds of uh, malted grain, malted barley. If not, Amylase has no other value, so don't think about adding it to fruits to get it going. Anywhere. It's not going to work. It's, amylase does one thing. It does one thing only. It converts those, fermentable, those starches to fermentable sugars. If you already have it, you don't need it. If you don't have it, you need it. There, plain and simple. All right, this is what I've got. I've got 15 liters, which is 3.96 gallons. And in my math, up oh, for today, we're going to call that four gallons as far as our gazintas when we start thinking this thing through. Because uh, we know a gallon is 3.78 liters or 3,780 milliliters. Now I'm going to do this in both. And I had, to, I had to choose one over the other because the scales are going not, not the same. It, it, it's a linear measurement, but they're different. Um, we want to know what is for popcorn, for our popcorn that we're going to mash, we want to know what is, how many gravity points per pound per gallon are we going to get? Because I've got, remember, five pounds and I've got four gallons. Then we also want to know how many gravity points to make it equal. A one pound is 226.8 grams. So we want to find out how many gravity points per that many grams per 3,780 milliliters? And that's just a direct conversion from imperial to metric. Now, we also want to do the same thing for our regular corn. Now, what I do know is I do know that flake corn, you need about 39 gravity points. That should be a familiar figure because that's what you get from corn sugar. But it 
85% efficiency, which is really good if you're doing it right, um, it's about 33. So we know that we've got a we've got a figure out there from flake corn that we can get about about 33 gravity points per 226.8 grams in that many liter, milliliters in 3.78 liters or 33 gravity points per gallon. So um, we know that. But what I couldn't find is I couldn't find any definitive information on popcorn or on just regular ground corn. So we're going to take a step forward and we're going to learn the answer to that and you can share it with everybody else. But remember, these, these are what George calls data points. And with these data points, you can figure out everything else about your process, your mash, what is your alcohol by volume, you can determine what your anticipated volume from your draw is going to be. Um, there's so much you can learn from that. So let's get started. As a matter of fact, we might even use bricks because bricks is a European uh, measurement for gravity points. We'll get to that. All right. Now, what I have here is I'm sitting on that cooler and I've got some hot water in it. You normally put hot water in the cooler, it's like preconditioning the cooler. You don't have to do that if you put putting ice in it, but if you put something hot in there, you want to preheat it. Uh, so I've got some hot water. What I'm going to do is dump that hot water out into the sink, and then I'm going to pour my 15 liters, which is right now at 169 degrees. Now this is my strike temperature. This is important. Your strike temperature and the temperature for your mashing uh, your mashing temperature should be, oh my goodness, where's my, I got a piece of paper around here where I wrote all this down so I wouldn't get it messed up. Remember when we're using amylase, what George always tells you, 155 degrees is your, is, is your mark. That's your, that's your definite temperature that you got to get to and maintain as long as possible. And that's because amylase likes it right there. Uh, there are a lot of other things that take place. And that's sort of like the median. So between 152 and 160 degrees, amylase is really happy. Now, beta amylase is really happy between like 113 and 150. Uh, 155 is your mark because we're not that concerned about beta amylase or gluco. Uh, we're worried about converting those, ferment, those starches to fermentable sugars. <clears throat> Follow me so far? So right now, I've got it at... Uh, 160, I've got 165 degrees would be 73.8 degrees Celsius. I'm at 171, so it's going to be just a little bit higher than that. All right, um, 68.33 degrees Celsius is equal to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the only figure that we have to concern ourselves with right now, with the exception of the strike temperature. And the reason we use the strike temperature higher than the temperature that we are looking for is because when I add the grain, that grain is going to absorb a lot of that thermal energy. That thermal energy absorption is going to start to cause that mash temperature to go down. Plus, in the transfer, and while I've got the lid off, all those things, and I'm stirring, I'm, I'm going to lose a couple of degrees. I already know that. So I want to make sure that my strike temperature is high enough so that when I add my grain that it only drops to a, a, the temperature that I'm looking for and it doesn't go any lower nor does it stay that much higher. Well, here we are. I've got my 15 liters already transferred into uh, my 10 gallon cooler. This 10 gallon cooler is actually 37.9 liters or 10 gallons. Um, and I just checked the temperature, and I was right. Remember, I told you I was going at 171. It's already down to 168. That's what I, I lost uh, three degrees at the transfer. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Uh, so right now I'm at 168, 167.9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. I'll lose a little bit more heat, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to add the corn. Now this is just the ground up corn, and I've got my six row barley already prepared. This is uh, a half a pound. And a half a pound is enough. I thought I said earlier I thought it was two pounds. No, it's a half a pound. Half a pound of six-roll barley. 
So uh, we're going to use that to convert the uh, five pounds of corn malt. So here we go. And this is the easiest process because it's nothing more than just adding what I already have. I'm not going to do anything special. I've got the corn added. And I've mixed it up really good because it'll clump up on you. You know, of course, it's really fine. Um, and I'm down to, what I expect, 162 degrees now. So we're losing the energy quickly. I haven't added my six-row barley yet. I'm going to wait until that's at 160 degrees. Then I'm going to add my two-row barley. Then, of course, I'm going to put the lid on it and let it sit there. For how long? 90 minutes. 90 minutes is plenty of time. Uh, a lot of times your conversion, depending, now this is another topic all in itself, is whether you have a thick or a thin mash, uh, can be as quick as 30 minutes, but you're not going to hurt it by letting it sit for 90 minutes. Um, a thin mash will take about a good 60 minutes. Thicker mash will take uh, a less time. Well, now here we go. I'm at 159.8 or 71 degrees Celsius. So it's time to add, it's time to add my half a pound of six row barley, which is full of amylase enzyme. And I'll, I won't get much more out of it. Uh, I only want this for the amylase that's resident inside the barley itself. Let's get that mixed in there. And we're gonna take advantage of the temperature and I got my pH to 5.2. I did have to add some of my uh, a pH stabilizer, 5.2. It's called 5.2 pH stabilizer. And uh, you use that at a tablespoon per five gallons is what the uh, dose rate is. Um, and it will, it will balance your pH. All right, now we'll start our time. And right now it's 16.04. So I'll write that here. Uh, I'm going to leave this for 90 minutes. What I want to know now is I want to know how close is my temperature on this one since it's been heating while we were working on this one. And we're at 166. And remember I told you on this one since I could control this heat a whole lot easier that I was going to stop at about 165. So now it's time to add our our popcorn. Oh, yes. Now, this one is a little bit more coarse, so it's not going to bulk up on me as much as the other corn did. 1607, 1604. We'll wait 90 minutes, and then we'll check the gravity and find out. Well, first, we'll do our starch test to find out if we've converted all those starches to fermentable sugars, and then we will check the gravity. We'll be back in 90 minutes. Well, we've got just a little bit of time. So I'm going to share a couple of things with you. You see, I've got a barrel that I've had uh, sitting here, and I've soaked it in water. And the, the purpose for soaking it in water is to make sure that it's sealed. It's a brand new barrel. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead, you know, I'm going to do it this way. I'm just going to turn it upside down. It'll dump a whole lot quicker. And I'll dump all the water out of that so that I can fill it. Now, and the reason I put this part in here is because I know I've been going through these teasers about something phenomenal that we're getting ready. Uh, it's a whopper that we're getting ready to introduce. And I'd like for you, if you get an opportunity here, matter of fact, you can stop at this point and come back. Uh, type in Genio Still. That's it. G-E-N-I-O Still uh, in your web browser. And um, just take a gander at that. I've got one of these. And I'm going to introduce it to you uh, because you're part of the community. This thing is simply put amazing. 95 plus percent from the first drop to the very last drop is what it produces. Uh, or you can run it as a pot still. And I did that and I made some brandy. You see, I've had this in oak chips for two days. And I'm now getting ready to add it to my small three liter barrel. Um, it's, yeah, it's time for me to replace a bunch of my barrels 
Um, like I told you, you get about six uses, about six runs out of them, and it all depends on uh, you know what you're putting in them. But uh, I get about six runs out of a barrel uh, after you know recharring them. Uh, they're not that expensive. Just go on BarrelsOnline.com. There. They've got the best source. Uh, you can select the size of barrel you want, and they'll ship it right to you, and you'll be surprised at the price. Uh, I believe this one is somewhere around 40 bucks, 45 bucks. Uh, remember that. BarrelsOnline.com. So, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to transfer into my three liter barrel and uh, I've got a my funnel uh, small screen I got from the local dollar store that I'll place in there and that's going to collect all those uh, oak chips uh, and I'm going to put it in that barrel this stuff is amazing uh, made that out of the Geno still or Genio still and oh by the way Genio is translated to mean genius and that thing really is a genius. So we'll be back shortly and we'll do our test, our starch test, and uh, we'll find out. We'll be able to answer those questions. And those questions were what is the gravity points per gallon per pound and gravity points per grams per milliliters? Welcome back. It's been 90 minutes. Now I just tested the temperature here in my, my igloo cooler. And it's, it's only dropped to 150 degrees, which 65.7 degrees Celsius. Okay, there's my first point. And I, actually, when we did this, I turned this off because I want to make sure I had the same environment in both. All, the only thing different is plastic versus metal. And this one is 148.9 65.1 degrees Celsius. So they're just about the same temperature over the same period of time. And um, they've both converted. And we have to now we've got to check to find out if that's absolutely true or not. Then I'll take the two samples out. I'll cool them down because I've got to get to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And I don't know what the Celsius is on that, but I know it's down there pretty low. But I'll get them down to the right temperature because they're calibrated that, and then we're going to test them both and find out what the gravity points are. And we'll also find out what the BRICS reading is. So stay tuned, and we'll be with you just in a few seconds. Let's get back to business now. Oh, you know, what we're going to use is I've got, uh, of course, tincture of iodine, and that's the brown stuff. Now, don't get the clear stuff. And if that's, a, if that's really, really hard for you to find, you know, your brew store does have, um, it's a uh, sanitizer, uh, it's called Iota 4. Uh, no, Iota Bank. No, Iota 4. You see, it's easy to remember. Iota Bank. No, Iota 4. And this is another, this is a chemical, it's, that's what it looks like. And there's your label, Iota 4. And uh, it works just like, and looks just like, and acts just like iodine. It's primarily iodine so you can use either of these and matter of fact we're going to use this one today just in, well no we'll just use that regular iodine I, I'm used to using iodine I always do so so what we got to do is we got to get ourselves a sample and then I'm going to come over to the camera and I'm going to show you the difference in or if there's a difference we're going to we're going to test both of these to make sure that we've got some good starch conversion so let me grab some iodine um, you know, we're almost at 40,000 subscribers. So please hang in there. Now, you know what? 65%, according to Facebook, 65% of my most recent viewers are not subscribed. That's amazing. Uh, well, I got a lot more viewers that aren't subscribed than those that are subscribed. Can you imagine where we'd be if all of those viewers, 65% of the millions of viewers, just subscribed? All right. Please don't be afraid. Doesn't cost you a thing. All right, here we go. I got a spoonful. And let me come over to the camera. And I'm going to actually adjust the camera down so you can look down upon this. All right, camera adjusted. And we're going to add 
a drop or two. Now you'll see how that starts to spread. Now watch this. If you give it a shake, you see how it starts to dissipate? And that's just a nice blue color. There is, there are, well, there are some starches there. You see them attached, but very, very little. Look at that. It's just, it's dissipated. It's almost clear. All right. That's the corn. The regular corn with the six row barley, all converted. Now let's check our popcorn. And if at all possible, when you do this, uh, make sure you don't have any floaties in there. Try to get just liquid. Here it goes. You notice how quickly that dissipates? Look at that. It just flat out almost goes away without any agitation. But if you shake it a little bit, it does roam around. There we go. And you see you got just a little bit, oh, just slightly a piece or two of starch in there. My friends, your friends, everybody's friends, we've converted, and that's the starch test. So we've, we've proved that at the proper temperature for the proper period of time uh, that we've converted. And bearded and bored, uh, your popcorn converted. All the starches are now fermentable sugars, and the same thing with uh, just the regular crushed corn and six-row barley. So we are equal at this point. Now what we need to do is find out the answers to our questions from the very, very beginning. We're getting really close to the end now. I've got two jars of this liquid in the freezer. I put it in the freezer because I knew it would cool it down a little bit quicker. I want to get down to 65 degrees, and uh, that's Fahrenheit, uh, because that's where I'm calibrated. My hydrometer, which is laying around here somewhere, and uh, believe it or not, when I pull it out, I'll show you. Uh, I'll read it to you. So, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, we're here at the final, and of course, we are a result-oriented channel. So, let's find out what our results are. Now, the regular corn and the six-row barley is 32 gravity points. I've got 32 gravity points, or, and now remember I told you about the brick scale? Uh, let's roll this over. My bricks is reading yeah, about nine and a half, almost 10. So, and oh, by the way, 60 degrees Fahrenheit's like just about 16 degrees Celsius. So what's that tell us? That tells us that we've got 32 gravity points, or 31 gravity points, 32-ish, 32 gravity points. Now let's do the calculation real quick. 32 gravity points, but we've only got it in 4 gallons, 15 liters, as opposed to 5 gallons, and we used 5 pounds. So... Uh, that's actually 80%. So if we multiply that by 0 0.80, we actually get 25.6. Mm. So these, this is our answer. We've got 25.6 gravity points per pound per gallon. We also have 25.6 gravity points per 226.8 grams per 300 3, oh yeah 3780 milliliters make sense so we know now we know the figure that we that's what we're going to get per pound or per 226.8 grams we're definitely going to have to add some sugar to it. But my point is, is that, so let's say for instance, we doubled that. So if we doubled that and had 10 pounds, or you figure it out, we would have 50, what that was that, uh, 10 pound B, 
gravity points. We're really close. All we need is a couple pounds of corn sugar. So, I mean, I hope my math works out. It's been a long day. Now, let's return this to its jug. Use that same graduated cylinder or cylinder. And let's do the popcorn. Now, when we do the pop, now, oh, by the way, now, there, there are, I've got two different types here. One of them is, is, it's called a triple scale, the triple scale. And one of them is color coded for beer or wine. And this one's not color coded. They're both exactly the same. As a matter of fact, this one's made in France and it doesn't have any conversions for uh, Fahrenheit to centigrade. I don't know where this one's made, but it'll say 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 point, I think, 86 degrees centigrade. That's what they're calibrated at. Sure. Now let's drop this and see what we get from that. And if you'll see here, there's quite a difference. Although, not a, I don't know if I'd call it a drastic difference. But I'm reading 20 gravity points. And so with the popcorn, we have 20 gravity points times 80%. That actually leaves us with, you ready? Drum roll. We get 16 gravity points per pound per gallon or 16 gravity points per 226.8 grams per 3,780 milliliters. I'm going to add sugar to that one too. But now we have a data point. We know. And unfortunately, well, it all depends on how you're looking at it because, now, see, now we start looking for flavor. Um, and we're going to find out when we run that whether the popcorn has a better flavor or the regular corn has a better flavor. So, but we're at this point now to where we know from now on how many pounds we need in order to achieve our goal. It, my goal whenever I'm doing a mash for um, a, dist a distillate is 1.090. And 1.090 really equates to on our brick scale, where did I put, there it is. 1.090 equates to somewhere around 22.5 on our brick scale. As you go higher in the bricks number, that means that your hydrometer is floating higher and higher and higher. It's just a different scale. So zero is equivalent to 1.000. And then, of course, we go up after that with fractions. Uh, at decimal fractions, or de yeah, decimal. So it, brick starts at zero, and that's equivalent to 1.000, and that's the data point for water. And then bricks goes up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, it goes up. That's, that's the brick scale. Uh, the specific gravity scale that we're normally accustomed to in the U.S. Uh, goes from 1.000 to 1.02. 2.0, 1.030. I know, we make it more difficult than it really needs to be, but that's kind of what we're accustomed to. So, there you have it. You have the answers that we've been looking for, and there they are. Now, last but not least, because of course we close, we know that you can use iodine, tincture of iodine, the dark stuff, not the clear, uh, that's to check for starch conversion, or you can use what we call iota four, no, or iota bank. Uh, okay, so I just want you to remember that iota four is an equally good product, and you'll find this in most brew stores. So there we are. Now, I am, of course, sensitive to feedback. Love feedback. Please comment below. Um, and again, I've mentioned 65% of our community uh, are not subscribed. And if you're one of those viewers right now, what's it going to hurt you to just subscribe? It costs you absolutely nothing. And yes, I survive and live and thrive off of subscriptions. 
the truth of the matter is the more subscriptions I get the better off the channel does and the more we can support and serve you our community so until next time you know it happy distilling